All right, we're back. Today is the uh, 3DS Max 2018 YouTube Classroom. This is video number 31. Today we're going to uh, do some spline uh, lofting. Okay, so spline lofting is basically what we had before. We have our original setup here. I'm going to hit Q, delete this, hit front, delete that, and then go into our spline tool. We already talked about this yesterday. Now, today what I want to do is actually take our spline that you may have already created. I'm going to have to create one real quick. Um, remember, if I click once, it just creates a nice sharp corner. If I click twice, um, I get a nice smooth bezier corner we talked about last time. I'm just going to make some sort of like a uh, little bit crazy. I'm going to make a sharp edge that time. And there. Cool. All right. So I've got this sort of like weird twisty sort of thing. All right. Now I'm going to hit number one so I can get into my vertex and I'm going to hit W so I can grab some of these. I'm going to hit Q a bunch of times to get back to my standard selection that I prefer. Now from the top view, my uh, layer is frozen. Oh, by the way, I noticed, um, I've been noticing that some people are having problems where they get this weird screen in the left. Um, with 2018, it seems to be a bug. If you left click up here and you make sure viewport layout tabs are open, if you just jump between one and the next uh, scene, then it'll be fixed. So just a heads up on that. If you get that error at home or if that situation happens where you've got some weird, like, it, it almost looks like you hit uh, Alt-W and then this window never changed. Like, you go back, but it's still kind of there and weird. Anyway, if you have that problem, that's how you fix it. Uh, anyway, back to what we were doing. Hit W, grab some of these. Uh, I'm just going to grab some of these and move them around, and you can adjust them as well. Uh, so you can actually see which direction they're going to go. Uh, I'm basically trying to make it so it has like a little bit of a, like a, I don't know, something. Just so it has like a weird directional change or something. Let's see what we got here. Let's do this. And we'll do that. And you can see you can adjust all these too. So if you want it to be that a little more drastic you can do so um, and you can sort of make it so that the curve makes sense now this one from the left uh, from the front so I guess we're kind of going off to the left here um, it's going to switch back on itself a little bit I'm going to smooth out some of this stuff so it looks I don't know cooler um, and now what I want to do is I can take this and I can make it look uh, it, this one's even going to go sort of twisty on it. Yeah, I kind of like that. That's cool. Drag it that way. Cool. Um, from the top view, I'm going to make sure it looks okay. Uh, I hit spacebar. Ugh, spacebar. So terrible. All right, cool. From the top, this is how it sort of goes. Uh, I'm going to drag these up. I'm trying to keep it sort of running along this primary line we've got here. Um, let's do that. It doesn't really matter. I just want it to look kind of like it's getting further and further out. Um, put these over here like that. All right, left view is front view. Okay, cool. Um, now, for some of them, I don't like the way it, like, let's say it's a little like it has like a kink almost like a kink in a hose right click on it and let's go ahead and change that to smooth um, that might help or I can deleting it might actually make it a little better that's kind of I think that turned out pretty good all right cool so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this weird shape um, and we are going to loft it okay loft is a separate modifier where we create an image or a, a shape and then we take that shape and move it all the way down our initial path. Okay, so it's shape and path process. So you've got your line. Now I'm going to create a shape. So whatever direction the shape is made is the direction it's going to loft in. So I want to make sure that the shape is facing the direction I want it to go. So from the left view, I know this is all sort of heading in that direction. Um, so 
Let's go ahead and pull that up. I'm going to unfreeze this and get it out of the way. Reference. Uh, delete. Delete. OK, cool. Um, back to where we were. OK, so from this, from this view, I'm going to create a shape. Now you can create whatever shape you want. Um, I'm going to create, oh, let's do a star, sure. OK, cool. So in any star you want in whatever shape you like, I'm just going to do it like this. Um, and then I'm going to adjust it because it needs to be small. It needs to be small enough to follow along the path. So I'm probably going to take it down to like, let's say, 5 centimeters. Yes. Yes, that's good. And then let's say six centimeters. And uh, maybe make this two. There, I like that. So, um, and you can adjust how many points you have on it. Um, I'm gonna do uh, four. Cool. And I'm going to move it to zero, zero, zero. Now, what I'm gonna do is from the left view. For, I'm sorry, from the front view. I'm going to loft this object. So it's an under the uh, Modify tab, I've got my star selected. I'm going to go to Modifier List and type in LOF for loft. Loft? No? Where is it? Oh, I know why. All right, so from the left view, I'm going to go back to the um, Create tab. And I've got to go from Splines. I'm actually going to change Splines. Or actually, in the Create tab, I'm going to go to Standard Primitives. We're going to do Compound Objects. So because I'm creating a geometric shape, I want to make sure that I'm actually, uh, it's going to be in 3D. So that's why we're moving back to the Geometry panel. We're going to press the loft button. It's right here. Okay, so we already have the, this time we have the path selected. Okay, so we're going to get the shape. So I sit, get shape, click this button here, and then click right here. And now what we've done is we have a star shape. I'm going to turn grid off that follows through the entire line. So now, before we could never actually see it, but now if I hit perspective so it renders a little better, if I hit F9, it renders out the actual shape. You can see that the star shape is following along the entire direction. Now the cool part is we can always go back to this under this tab, select loft and go to shape or path and then actually adjust those. Okay, so we can go on the path, select vert lines in the path, like vertexes and then adjust where they are so if they're not moving the way you want you can adjust it so you can still get a lot of control over this over the path under the if you select path line left you can adjust it as well whatever manipulation you do to that will change the actual shape. So if I add more edges, so if I want to add a bunch more edges to make it a sharp, you know, more edge star, you can do that. You can see immediately how this could be really useful making tubes or pipes or stuff like that. Um, or you could do something like uh, make it six. Basically what I've done now is I've created a, a circle. I've got a, I've got 10 points you can adjust the points and make it extremely smooth and you can adjust like the fillet radius and all, all this other stuff and this is a star if we changed it to be like a circle or something and added noise we can make a cave that you could fly through all you have to do is invert the the model itself um, once you create it you could hollow out the inside invert the normals and have it so it looks like it's 
uh, you, so you can see it from the inside instead. And then you could put a ship in it, and next thing you know, you're flying through some sort of cave. You put some noise on it, all sorts of cool stuff. Now, through here, you can also adjust the deformations and skin parameters. You can, uh, like, really, this comes down to how much you want to mess with it. Um, this system here, you can see what size things are. So how big it is, it's underneath, so it's never going to get the right size. But if you want to be, um, if you want to start as a point, you can do it right through here with the scale deformation, and then it will gradually get larger and larger. Kind of like if you want to make horns or, or something like that. If you want to make uh, a twist, if you've got twist to it, now it's not going to show much with our current shape, but if we go back here, change this to one, you can actually see the shape. Actually, let's do this a little better. Too many edges. Let's do uh, four. Cool. So now we've got that. Go back to here, the twist, and then you can see how much it's going to twist. It's hard to tell right now, but maybe if we get closer and then adjust it. You can see it's actually twisting and you can get it way twisted. So now it's actually going to twist as it goes through. Okay, and you can adjust, you can add keyframes on this just like um, the other splines we've dealt with before. You can insert points, you can do all sorts of stuff. Um, take this, uh, move it around, etc, etc. Um, and then there's bevel and fit and all sorts of stuff you and you can mess with that on your own if you like but you can see how if you were making I don't know um, a jellyfish with a bunch of tentacles uh, this would be a great option for creating that because you can get them nice and thick here and then adjust them as you go all right so that's how we're going to create uh, a loft so we create a line and then we grab this sort of shape here and make that so go ahead and let's save this and let's go ahead and adjust it like that uh, left view so it's kind of coming down like this cool so you've got this sort of spline look um, and you've got a bunch of edges on it now you can tell we've gotten really expensive really quickly um, if your computer is running slowly you can adjust that by adjusting the shape itself and the path. Um, with the path itself, you can adjust how smooth it is. And with the shape, the easiest way to manipulate that, turn my grid back on so I can find my shape, um, is you can adjust this right here. You can adjust how many edges your actual thing is having. Now, obviously, since I'm making, um, if I'm going to make like a jellyfish sort of thing, I don't really want a star. I kind of want a circle. Um, so I'm going to make it like this, and then maybe like that, and then that's probably good. And you can see the adjustment there. There. Cool. And as before, you can see how this has changed. Cool, 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 cool. So um, go ahead and save this. We might actually go ahead and use this in the next scene. Um, eh, we'll see. Maybe, maybe not. Either way, I will see you next time when we are going to use our line skills to create a fancy vase. See you next time.